Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson. And thought I'd do another live stream this week. Let's do a quick tank update. We'll do a little bit of a channel update. And I will answer a bunch of your Q&A. So you guys got questions, put them in the chat, and I will do my best to answer them. So to begin with, while we're waiting on people to start watching, I am going to go ahead and just start giving you guys a little bit of an update on my tank. So as you know, my tank crashed about two months ago, and it's been a hell of a struggle getting things back in order. And actually, the crash really started more than two months ago, and it was really rough. I mean, I'm not sure what kicked it all off, but really it all kind of started about the same time I started pulling bio pellets off my tank and let the um, system try to take care of its nitrates through um, refugiums and stuff like that. And, you know, I've been doing a bunch of stuff like bringing new corals in and just kind of experiments with the tank because, you know, I was doing really well. Why wouldn't you experience? Well, that's probably where I screwed up, right? I experimented. I brought lots of new coral in and I, yeah, I got unlucky, unfortunately. So I've lost a lot of fish since then. Um, I've lost another fish in the last month, which was my remaining purple tang. That really hurt me. Um, I loved that fish. I've had him for a long time. He died and I don't know why he died died this one sucked he was a beautiful fish he looked perfect in fact like when i lost my black tang like six months ago um this fish had a white spot on him he was getting all jacked up he looked horrible and i really did my best to bring him back and i brought him back he looked amazing this fish was beautiful i was looking at him the day before he died and he looked amazing i got up the next day and he was beat to shit and dead so I'm going to guess that because I've had some fish dying that there must have been some aggression issues that I didn't see and he got his butt kicked by another fish in the tank. But that's the only guess I have. I mean, he could have been he could have died for another reason and then got beaten up because he's blown around by the powerheads and wave makers and all of that. So I'm not really sure why he died. Um nitrates continue to rise. They're up to 25. I did up my bio pellets um i've gone from one cup to two cups i'm really trying to bring these on slowly part of the problem with bio pellets is they're going to take a long time to fully kick in and you know i'm going to take a long time to fully kick in and bring the nitrates down um so this is going to be a really long slow process um i have I have been doing my water changes. So I've got, how often do you do water changes on the non-cycled quarantine tank? Um, so non-cycled quarantine tank um, daily. Those guys you're going to need to do daily. Um, you can watch your ammonia, but really daily on a non-cycled quarantine tank. My cycled quarantine tank, I can do faster than that. On my big 210, I'm doing 30 gallons weekly right now for the simple fact that... Um, that's the best I can do. I really need bigger water change containers and that kind of stuff, which at the time I don't really have space for. It's really a fault in the design. When I built this system, I built it for 90 gallons. Um, I can do up to a 60 gallon water change with the two tanks because I'm running two 30 gallon tanks. And um, that would be perfect for a 90 gallon system. But since I've grown the thing to 450 gallons total without upgrading the water get chain system, that has hosed me. So that's something I'm going to have to work on and get working correctly, right? Because we've got to get the nitrates down. We've got to get the colors back. Um, on the bright side, alkalinity, um, magnesium, calcium, they're kind of holding right where they're supposed to be. Last water chest I did, alk was 9.3. Um, calcium was 4.25. Mag was 14.50. So um, yeah, those are right where I need to be. pH is holding right around 7.8. And that's because I run a calcium reactor. So, I mean, we're going in the right direction. It's just really slow and it's depressing because honestly, I'd like to be doing more with the tank. I'd like to be doing more video on the tank. Um, I'd like to be buying new fish and coral, but until everything's right, I'm not going to be. Um, and then probably long-term, I'll be changing the way I 
stock that tank where I used to have it really heavily populated with fish. That probably won't happen again for a long time, if ever. To be honest, when the tank did its best is when I just had a couple of tangs in the tank. So that'll probably happen. So let's get to some of the comments. Uh, let's see, we got... Do you think a 55 gallon is too small for a yellow tank? The short answer is yes. Um, a 55 gallon is too small for a yellow tang if you plan on keeping him there long term. But if you got a good cycled um, 55 gallon tank with good filtration on it and you get a really small baby yellow tank, he'd probably be getting there for a couple of years. Um, currently, I have a Scopus Tang in my 24 gallon nano. And I got him as a really little baby guy from Vietnam. And he's doing fantastic in there. And I've got the plans that eventually he'll go into my frag system or the main display. I've got room in there for a Zebra Soma Tang. So, um, so either him or let's see, Nano Fish 180's on. So Christina's on there and I have her yellow tang in my frag system. So he may go in the big tank eventually too. But all this is going to wait until everything is stabilized. Let's see. So it's good to see her on Christina. Uh, the College Reefer, favorite fish. Um, you know what? I am probably going to have to to say a blue tang they're not the easiest they're not the best algae eaters they're so gorgeous they're awesome to watch swim around so i love those guys so definitely my favorite's blue tang um yeah and yeah christina's on here and when i asked for a painting yeah blue tang it was the way to go let's see next how often do you suggest I do water changes on a 40 breeder with no sump? I would say once a week is pretty good, depending on how heavily you stock it. Um, really, once a week is pretty standard for water changes, and I think that's a good idea. Um, getting ammonia badge, that's in regards to the quarantine tank and how often you do it. And that's actually brilliant. The ammonia, the ammonia badges are great because basically if you get ammonia in your QT tank, it's going to show it on the badge instead of having to constantly do ammonia tests, which is a really good way to go. Um, we got, I have a four foot tank, hundred gallon. There is a big yellow tank and a pair of clownfish and a six green blue chromis. I have a file fish and I'm wondering if I can put another one. How do you sex them? I have never sexed file fish. Um, and to be honest, I've never kept more than one in a tank. Um, file fish in general aren't great for reef tanks. They have a tendency to eat coral. So that's definitely one that's with caution. The only file fish I've ever kept is one of the ORA Aptasia eating file fish and I kept it in a sump to eat um, Aptasia and I kept it and I basically moved it from my sump through my frag tanks just to keep the Aptasia down and it did great. I had no problem with it eating coral. At least I didn't see it eat coral and I guess if it did I probably had enough coral in the tank that it wasn't a problem but I did have those yellow polyps and I still have some of those and he didn't eat those and they looked kind of like an Aptasia. So I thought if he'd go after anything, he'd go after those and those never got eaten. So let's see. What's up, Scotty? Gabe's Reef Tampa. It's good to see you on here. Okay, let's see. Did something change since you left Aquamedic? How do you earn money? And do you have something to do with the hobby? Right now, I am looking for a job. So I've got some side work I do right now. So I've still got Aquamedic. Um, I'm actually building another YouTube channel, not reef related. So you guys will be seeing that soon. Hopefully it's something you guys will be interested in, but it definitely Mile High Reefer is going to keep going. But yeah, I, um, I am in the process of looking for a real full-time job and odds are it won't be reef related just because you know, I got to earn and the reef hobby is a hard one to really earn enough money to survive it. Um, it's great if you can survive on kind of a retail paycheck, but for me, that's going to be really hard to do. Um, why did you shave? Um, you know, to be honest, it was real itchy. Um, I think 
I've done the beard thing like two or three times since I've been running this channel and I'll just basically grow it out till it annoys me and shave it off. And then I won't do it again for a long time. Um, but yeah, the, uh, it just gets itchy. I can't handle it. And then it grows in all patchy. It's, it's not my thing. I, I keep trying it hoping like when I get older, I'll grow a cool beard, but it, it, I just can't get a cool beard. Um, love the streams. Thank you so much. Um, let's see how long, how are you liking the Kessels now since you've had them for a while? Any issues with the corals? So it's not a fair question to say, um, are there any issues with the coral? The coral are having issues because of the um, nitrates, phosphates, all that kind of stuff. I am loving the Kessels and I'm not going to blame Kessels for any coral issues. I've kept coral under Kessels for years. Personally, when I worked at Aquamedic, that's all we used were Kessels and we got amazing results. And Honestly, that's why I went with Kessels on my tank is um, after many years of seeing the results I was getting out of Kessel, um, they were amazing lights. I mean, I'd have a hard time recommending anything else other than a Kessel. Um, I mean, you're going to get good results out of a lot of different lights. I mean, there's a lot of lights that are going to grow your coral. But I love the Kessel for a few reasons. The main one is it has that dense matrix LED on there. And basically it puts all the lights into a little tiny circle and that just blends it together so nicely. The new 360s, I've got more color options. Right now I'm running basically the blue spectrum only. Um, I don't like it as much because I don't get to see the colors. I really like that kind of white to blue ramp up, but until the algae starts to go away, I'm going, I'm not going to push things. I'm just going to kind of run blues. I'm um, yeah, I've shortened my light, my lighting span. I've been playing with it, just trying to take care of the algae. Really, that's going to be more of a nitrate issue. But once that's gone, um, hopefully I can really start playing with it, dial it in and get some great coral color. But first I got to get the corals healthy enough that the lighting is going to make the difference on the coral color. But yeah, I love Kessel. Um, really there aren't a lot of lights that I would pick over a Kessel. And um, the controller, I know a lot of you guys are down on the fact that it doesn't have a Wi-Fi, but I love the fact that I've got a real controller with the light. It's um, an added expense. I get that. But the fact is, is when I want to use my light, I just open the door. It's right there. I don't have to try to hook in with a cell phone or anything. Um, like, Every device I've ever used that's Wi-Fi connected just drives me insane. Like a printer, like a camera, like anything. It doesn't matter. You go to like log in. It doesn't want to connect. I've um, tested lights from other companies other than Kessel on their Wi-Fi. And I got weird results. Like um, I tested one company's light and the Wi-Fi connectivity would work on my iPad but it wouldn't work on an LG cell phone, but it would work on an Android Blackberry phone. It was just real weird. Like a certain app, it would work and hook up. In other ones, it wouldn't. And when I say it worked on the Blackberry, it was real hit or miss. Like it would work and then the app would just freeze up and crash. So um, yeah, and then of course, like, I love my iPhone, but even like just the Google TV. Um, so I've got the my TV. It's got the Chromecast built in, and half the time it freezes up, and the only way to fix it is to restart my phone, which is really annoying and a problem I didn't have with Google. And honestly, I think it, the part of the problem is is every phone maker is going to be a little different, and um, lighting companies aren't really able to test all of that. And then I worry about the long-term longevity of all this stuff. Um, if your light has only a control that's a Wi-Fi, I think, I don't know what that's going to be like in 10 years. I mean, or well, not even 10 years in five years is the new technology going to work with that. I have no idea as they update phones. So that's another thing that kind of worries me, um, with the Kessel, with that controller, it's just, there it works um it's even got the plug-in so i can plug in my old lights to it it's perfect for my situation but yeah for a lot of you i'm really hoping they get that dongle out soon so we get the wi-fi all right let's see what else do we have i had an aptasia issue and bought a copper band 
That got rid of all of them in my DT. He would eat mysis, but still seemed to starve. Any tips on how to get keep them long term? Um, oh, copper bands are so tough. Um, you know, you can try clams in the half shell and all this. And really, I hate to see it. It's going to be down to the fish itself. I've had copper bands that would eat almost anything. And that guy was in quarantine. I was so happy with it. And then it died because of a power outage. That sucked. And then I bought another copper band that was just kind of picking at the food and eating at the fish store. And then no matter what I did, I couldn't get him to eat. So he died. That sucked. So um, I stopped buying copper bands for that reason. Um, I use um, large quantities of peppermint shrimp to control Aptasia. And that seems to work really well for me. <clears throat> I watch a lot of reef channels and your tank is the best. Thank you so much. I hate to say it. I think right now my tank personally isn't the best, but I really take pride in it. And one of these days it will be back to its former glory. Um, how familiar are you with Bauer Banky Acans versus Lord Incuniatus? Please excuse the misspelled words. Don't worry about that. Um, Bauer Bankies are way cool and incredibly underrated. They are like a big Acan Lord. And I say Acan Lord and technically it's the wrong word. Um, you can just call it a Lord and call it whatever you want, but they're super similar. They're going to very similar water condition. It's just that Bauer Banky. They got those big heads on them, but um, they're usually pretty expensive and getting the really cool colors is a lot harder. Um, you probably get like 10 amazing acans for every one Bauer Banky that comes in. So um, Bauer Banky's um, finding a really nice one you're going to pay a premium for. But, you know, there's enough like average ones out there that they're going to be the kind of the same price, same care level. So if you are looking for something a little different and you want bigger, fatter heads, Bauer Banky's are really cool. I don't have any in my tank currently, but I'm a big fan of them. Um, they're great fraggers. So if you guys are looking for something that frags, you can get real big fat head frags out of them. And they're really just cool. I mean, and similar water conditions, similar everything. I love those guys. Uh, I definitely recommend them. Let's see. Thank you for the response on the daily water change uh, on the non-cycle aquarium. Thanks, but I did miss the percentage of water change. I'd say about 10 per, oh, well, on a QT, I'd be closer to 50%, right? Because ammonia is your biggest thing. And that's why I'm looking for, that's why personally I keep a cycled QT tank. Um, I use sand, but a lot of people use like marine pure blocks or something like that just to take care of that ammonia. Um, ammonia is what's going to kill your fish in QT. It's what's going to stress them out. So what you got to do, what it takes to get the ammonia down. And I like a cycled QT personally. So if that's an option for you, I would definitely go that route. Uh, so here's somebody saying mine loves LRS refrenzy. That will be in regard to the, um, copper band. And that's true. They, they will take a lot of those. Um, the LRF reef frenzy is really cool for getting your fish to eat because he's got multiple different foods in the mix. So, um, usually your fish will find something in there that it likes. The hard part's going to be is if you're feeding with a bunch of other fish, the copper bands, they got little tiny mouths and they're going to have a hard time getting to that fish or to that food. Um, one cool trick though, is you can get some sort of a container with a small mesh or something that you can put over it. And that way the other fish can't get to it, right? Because the, um, copper bands, they have that long, thin snout and they'll be able to get their nose into something like that. But a, um, a tang or something with a bigger, fatter snout can't get it in there. So if you're having problems with other fish eating the food before your copper band gets to it, that might be a good solution. So get something round or flat that you can put a mesh or something over it that really only the copper band can get its mouth into. I haven't personally tried it, but I've seen other people do it and it looks like a really cool way to do it. My powder blue tang is aggressive and my new fish is more than the other tangs. Do you think this is normal since you will become the lead fish in the tank? 
Yes, um, powder blues are aggressive fish. Um, they're from the genus Acanthotherius, and I hope I said that right. But um, yeah, they are just notoriously aggressive fish. I had one for three years or so, and he was the king of the tank, and he would chase around my Desertini, who was three, four times his size. He didn't care. They're the boss of the tank. So that is the downside of the powder blue. Maybe one of the prettiest um, fish out there, but they're aggressive. So that's the downside to those guys. How do you keep your parameters stable in your 24 gallon? So I'm super simple on the 24 gallon these days. For a long time, I tried running it without water changes and all that. These days, I'm at a water changes and easy coral. For a small tank, it's like a no brainer, right? Um, you keep your parameters stable by doing lots of water changes and then pick easy coral. So soft coral and LPS and stuff that doesn't use a lot of calcium or alkalinity helps keep your parameters stable. So, I mean, if you want to run a full SPS tank and have Montes and Acros and fast growing SPS, you can do that but it's going to be harder to keep your parameters stable. You're going to need dosing pumps. You're going to be testing every day, or you can do your nano tank on easy mode. Get zoanthids, get soft corals, get easy LPS. I mean, ACAN frags are great. They're usually pretty easy. They can be touchy, but I mean, get healed coral, um, get aquacultured stuff, leptoceras, samacora. Those are beautiful, easy to keep corals that are relatively slow growing. Um, hammers and frog spawns are usually pretty slow growing. So are torches. So any of those, I mean, just put your tank on easy mode, pick easy corals, slow growing LPS, and your parameters will be so much easier to take care of. And of course, soft corals, they don't use a lot. Um, so another good one to do. So really, I would say pick easy coral or you're going to be testing and dosing. That's really where we're going to be. Me personally, I've got basically easy coral in the nano. Um, I've got a couple small Monty's in there and I've got one acro, which you would think an acro is not easy mode. This is one. Um, it's a green slimer I got from Worldwide Corals when they sent me that surprise pack um, through Reef Builders. It has come through everything. It went through the cowfish dying. It went through... Um, the heater failing on and the tank going to almost 90 degrees. It's been through everything and it just continues to live. It's not a, it's not the fastest growing acro, but nothing kills it. I'm thrilled with this acro. It's like the best acro I've ever had. Um, why don't you have super chats? That's a good point. I should look into this. Um, really? Cause I only do live streams once in a while. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. I will definitely look into super chats and see what it takes to enable those. Cause that's a good idea. I'd really, honestly, at this point, I'm trying to, um, build this into somewhat of a business. I mean, I don't want to like turn this into like something I have to worry about making income from, but it would be nice to get some love and support. So let's go with that. Um, next one. I love copper bands are beautiful, but wow, they're just too finicky for me. I totally agree with that. Do you think a four by two tank would be sufficient for a regal tang or is it better to go with a five footer? If you are wanting a regal and you haven't picked your tank yet, do the five footer. A four by two will work for quite a while. Um, I kept one in a 90 gallon for two, three years. It'll work. Um, but yeah, if you can do more, that'd be better. Let's see. We got Aaron's Aquarium watching. Michael, what is up? Thank you for watching. If you guys don't know Aaron's Aquarium, subscribe to his channel. He's an old friend. Love that guy. So let's see. What do we got? Yeah, I'm a bank should be kept easy. Leave the uh, SPS and harder to keep corals for large display. Yep, I agree. Easy corals. Digging the new backdrop. What's up with the fish tank ninjas? Ah, uh, Infamous Aquatics, another old friend. Yes, Fish Tank Ninjas. I feel a little bad saying that, but you guys know Infamous. He's got a cool channel. Um, yeah, new backdrop. Um, this is 
actually the old PGS Aquatics backdrop. Um, I'm no longer doing videos for PGS Aquatics. Um, basically what happened is when I started doing videos for PGS Aquatics, they were one company and then they were bought two times since then. So, um, yeah, that, you know, that's just part of the growing pains of a new company. So, um, they're doing their own thing. I still talk to the guys out there, but yeah, it's just not part of the direction that they're taking their company anymore. So I'm not doing their videos. So I'm using it for mile high reefers. I love this backdrop. It looks sweet. I know you don't like water changes. Do you think, um, because of your parameters are not Yeah. So I've talked about this a little bit in the past, but yeah, I hate water changes, but for me where I am now, water changes are a necessity. In fact, when I'm done here, I'll be doing that 30 gallon weekly water change. Um, my 24 gallon, I've gone back to in full water changes on the big 210. The goal is to get that tank back to not doing water changes. But right now I am so far from that, that it's not going to happen anytime soon. If, ever. So when I made the video on not doing water changes, that was really a great way for me to run the tank at the time. Um, everything was stable. The filtration was perfect for everything it needed to be. My nitrates were undetectable at all times. I wasn't doing experiments in the tank. I had less fish at the time and it worked brilliantly. The problem is, is then I made changes to my system that screwed the whole thing up. So now I'm living with the consequences and they were unforeseen consequences. It's stuff that, you know, should be okay. I wanted to find out, can I run with a refugium alone in my case with that many fish as heavily as I was feeding? The answer was no. So that was one of the big problems I had. Let's see. I have an Innovative Marine Nouveau 10 with a Kessel A80. I have mostly SPS and I'm wondering if I should switch to an AI Prime HD. Is the 80 enough? Um, the A80s probably aren't enough, I'll be honest. Um, they're really cool little lights, but if you want full SPS, I don't know if you're gonna get quite the light out of it that you have. Um, you could easily just, get a cheap um, $10 Monty or Acro or whatever you're looking for, put it in the tank and see how it does under the lighting. But if you're, if you're worried about it, it's a good time to upgrade. Um, the AIs are great. Um, if you want to stick with Kessels, their 160s are great. I've ran those over nano tanks. Kessel 160s are a great way to go. All right. Well, we are 27 minutes into this live stream. And I've been able to answer a lot of questions. It's been great talking to all of you. And I had a lot of fun doing this. So we'll do another one of these soon. So thank you for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, subscribe. And thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you soon. So we got to end this stream.